Hello everyone and welcome to the next in our series of daily origami for YouTube. Today we're going to continue looking at some traditional origami and today we're going to make a windmill. Um, this is probably a really one of the more common sort of scene uh, origami. You see a lot of kids making these and then you know putting them on either a uh, chopstick or on like a straw and creating your own kind of little um, spinning kind of wind thing. <laughs> I guess it's called a windmill. There's a better word for that. Why can't I think of what the word is? I'll think of it later or you guys can tell me in the comment section. <laughs> There's a name for these things. I just can't think what it is. So, um, But it is also the uh, base that you use for this is really useful in a lot of other steps of origami. So it's a great thing to kind of start out with somebody who's learning origami for the first time and it'll get you used to what is called the boat base or the double boat base. So we're going to be using a standard square piece of paper. I'll be using paper that's 15 by 15 centimeters. I know sometimes these are really simple and easy kind of origami that are great if you're making your own kind of greeting cards. So I'll make sure to let you guys know the dimensions when you're finished if you're trying to make something um, to make kind of like in a uh, display of some sort. You'll know the appropriate proportions. So um, what we're going to do is start off here by creating some basic creases in our paper. And these creases, there's a lot of different ways you can get to the boat base. This isn't the only way, but I think this is the easiest way because it gets the creases going the right way from the beginning rather than making it harder later on. So what uh, I like to do is start off here with our color side facing down and just start by putting some preliminary diagonal creases. So fold your paper in half into a big triangle and do that both ways. Then, with the color side facing up, go ahead and take each one of the four corners and fold them into the center. Once you've got all four of those folded in, flip it over, and then we're just going to repeat those steps one more time here. So fold into the center. And just take care that you don't accidentally snag on this part here. It's easy to snag on those pockets and tear the paper. We're just going to go ahead and fold around here. We're just doing this to get the creases. But uh, go ahead and try your best to keep things as straight and smooth as you can. Make everything go a little better later on down the road. Once you've finished all of that, go ahead and open it all up. And we want to open everything so that we're looking at the white side, so the color side facing down. And you should have a really nicely defined square in the middle with some valley creases. We're just going to use those and fold in on the side here. And you will be reversing the top and bottom part, but the beginning part down here is right. So just go ahead and fold right into the center from that. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side too. Just folding in and making sure that you get everything kind of lined up there. And then I've got a nice crisscross of creases in the middle here. I'm going to use those to help me along as I open up this side here and then open up this side as well. Get both of those sides open up together and then just push down on the crease at the top. And then go ahead and smooth these out. Now if you need to make any adjustments to make things look you know, more pretty, then go ahead and adjust a little bit here. But you should be able to smooth things down. So you get to a fairly nice little point on both sides. And that's a boat base. And I'm just going to flip it over and do the same thing on this side too. So just using the creases we already have here, open both of those flaps out, push down from the top, and then just smooth these parts out into a nice point on either side. And that gives you this base here. And then from here, uh, to make the windmill kind of thingy, Pinwheel, that's the word. Yay, I remembered it. Okay, so maybe you guys already told me, but that's what I was talking about. We're going to take um, one of the sides here. I'm going to just take this top right and push up. And then take my bottom left, opposite, and push down. So you should have a nice uh, rotating fold here between all of these. And if you do use it and pin it down, you can actually kind of open up these little pocket areas here and these do actually spin. So you get kind of an action origami from this as well, where if you put it on uh, and you give it a good little gust of wind there, it will spin around. So these make, these look so pretty if you can use some like hologram paper or some uh, metallic paper because they really make a nice shine in the sun. 
Uh, definitely a fun project to do for things, so it just gives a good spin once you get a little bit of air in there. I don't think it'll work when I do it here, but oh, just blew away. <laughs> that's stupid. <laughs> So, but that's our finished pinwheel and um, does look really cool just flat like that too. So the dimensions for this guy are, uh, let's see here, it's basically 15 by 15 when you get it all down. It's the same size as your paper. If you're looking at the largest place where it is um, extended out um, and 15 centimeters tall. Nice, easy math. I like it when the math is easy, right? It's the exact same size, so <laughs> kind of gives you an idea um, of how big everything is there. And that is our finished project for today. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.